Okay, this is algebra section 12.3. The counting principle states that if you want to know the number of possibilities, um, you just multiply, if you want to count how many possibilities there are, you multiply all your options together. So what I mean is, like, if you wanted to know how many outfits were possible, let's say, and you had three sweaters, and you had five shirts, and you had four pairs of pants. If you multiply all of that together, it'll tell you how many possible outfits you could have with those uh, options. And so in that example, there'd be 60 possibilities <coughs> by multiplying together how many sweaters, how many shirts, and how many pairs of pants. Uh, permutation is let's say you had 10 things and you wanted to use three of them rather than using all of them how many would there be um, we have a special little symbol for that n p r for permutation so this is the number of things you have to choose from and then how many of them you're going to use so for example let's say i have 10 pairs or how about 10 pictures and I want to put three of those on the wall I would do 10 times 9 times 8 you do the number that we have to choose from how many we're gonna put in place and then we do 10 9 8 the first number tells you what to start with and the second number tells you how many to use and you always count down because the idea is if you have 10 pictures, you put one on the wall, now there's 9 left, you put another one on the wall, now there's 8 left. So another one, how about 12P4 would be 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. And you can get the answers for those. <coughs> so now we're going to do some examples that show us how to use these tools. The first example says, how many different student identification numbers can be assigned if an ID number consists of two letters from the alphabet followed by three digits? So what I like to do for this is fill out some blanks of what I'm going to need. So I have two letters in the alphabet followed by three numbers. My counting principle tells me to figure out how many possibilities there are for every single one of these spaces and then multiply them all together. So the first blank says it could be any letter from the alphabet. I know that there are 26 possibilities because there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Another letter, so another 26. And then it says any three digits. So counting the numbers 0 through 9, there are 10 digits. And another number. And another number. And if I multiply together all the possibilities for each of those blanks, there will be <coughs> 676,000 possible ID numbers. Letter B says you are redecorating your room and have five pictures to arrange in a row along one wall. The pictures are labeled A, B, C, D, and E. How many different ways can you arrange the five pictures? Well, if you want to arrange all five pictures, we need five spaces. And if I have five things to choose from, that means I have five choices for the first space. Now, once I place a picture, and I can randomly place any picture I want to, now I only have four pictures left. Let's place another one. Now I have three pictures left. We'll place another one, now I have two. And once you place that last one, now there's only one left. So what we're really doing here is kind of 5P5, because we're starting with five pictures and placing all five of them. There's a special name for that, and that's called a factorial. So if you see an exclamation point, that means you're going to start with the number, and you count down until one, and then you multiply everything together. And this will tell me how many different ways there are to arrange those five pictures. <coughs> if you arrange the pictures in a random order, what is the probability of any one outcome? 
Well, if I wanted the pictures to be like A, B, C, D, E, for example, there's only one possible way to do A, B, C, D, E. If I wanted them backwards, E, D, C, B, A, there's only one possible way to do that. The, the, the probability of any one specific outcome is 1 out of 120. Letter C says, how many different ways can you arrange any three of the five pictures along a wall? Well, if I have five pictures to choose from, but I'm only placing three of them, that means I need a five times a four times a three. The five tells me that I start at five, and the three tells me that I'm using three numbers. The fact that it ends in a three is just kind of a coincidence, but we're starting with five, and we have three spaces to fill, and we count down, again, because once we place a picture, we have less to choose from. Five times four times three. I think I did that one above. 60. So there are 60 different ways to arrange those three pictures on the wall. Okay, I'm going to erase this now so that I can scroll down for letter D. If you arrange the pictures in a random order, what is the probability that the arrangement will be ABC? We saw up here that the answer was 60, so the correct alphabetical order, there's only one way out of the 60 possibilities that they'll be in the right order. Okay, and that is it for the notes on this lesson. Good luck with the exercises.